Florence here and today I'm back again with another episode of my knitting video podcast thing. For today's episode I have, I believe, two finished objects to show, one larger garment and a pair of socks. I then have three new work in progress pieces that I've cast on since the last episode to introduce you to. And then I have quite a few new things to show you. Yarn, books, all kinds of things. So that's sort of how this episode is going to be structured. As usual, before I get into talking about any of that, I will speak briefly about what I'm wearing. If you watched the last episode, you would have seen this t-shirt that I'm wearing today. This striped t-shirt. Um, I just finished it for the last episode and it's a design that I'm currently working on. This t-shirt is knitted in one strand of a yarn called Sephira from the brand Pasquale. It is a, I believe, 75% merino, 25% silk blend. This is some of the nicest yarn I have ever touched. It is extremely soft, there is absolutely zero itch whatsoever from this. It is definitely pricey, but it feels expensive as well. The colours that I used for my striped t-shirt in particular are olive for this very dark green colour and taupe for the greenish beige that I did the stripes with. I'm super happy with this t-shirt. I'm making some very minor adjustments to the neck shaping before I get the pattern test knitted, but Yes, I think other than that, it's pretty much exactly what I was hoping for and I'm looking forward to releasing it this summer. Okay, so I suppose I'll jump right in with the largest finished objects I have to show today. When I filmed the last episode, I had, I believe, just cast this on. Um, I think I had knitted the yoke, so I just divided for body and sleeves, maybe. Or it might just have been the yoke at that point, sort of above the underarm section. Because I've been designing a lot of my own stuff lately, I've been wanting to just do some pattern knitting you know, choose a pattern by a designer who I trust to design something that I'm going to love and just do as I'm told and end up with a really nice jumper at the end. I picked this pattern from Petit Knit because I've had great success with Petit Knit patterns. I know it's very basic, but everything I've knitted from a Petit Knit pattern I have ended up loving. Um, and so she's a designer I keep going back to. This design is called the Sycamore Sweater and it was released in collaboration with Izia, I think last year. Um, so the original pattern calls for, I believe, is it six different strands of yarn from Izia? Something like that. The main colour is Jensen and Silk Mohair, I think, and then the contrast stripes are supposed to be on three strands of Spinny plus Silk Mohair. So I did not do that. Um, this is the yarn that I used for my main colour. I can't pronounce the name, but here it is in case you're interested. The colour is light grey, I think. And then the stripes are made of a bunch of different yarn from Missing for Olive held together. I used two strands of merino and one strand of soft silk mohair. The merino was in the shades Dusty Dove Blue, I think, and Dusty Petroleum Blue? Something Petroleum Blue. All of the colours will be in the description as well as on my Ravelry page. And then one strand of mohair in the shade Lead. Obviously this sort of two strands of merino, one strand of mohair combination is really different texturally from the strand of yarn that I was using for the main colour. So I was a little bit worried about how that would work out. Um, I did swatch to check that the gauges matched, but I wasn't really sure how it would affect the structure of the finished garment. But actually they match up kind of well, other than the stripes being definitely softer and a little bit less scratchy than the main body of the jumper. They actually look quite alike. The sort of natural halo that this grey wool has kind of is a close visual match to the halo you get from the mohair. So even though there is no mohair held with the main colour, um, it still has that fluffy halo to it. When I was talking about this piece in the last video, I think, I mentioned that I thought it would be a pretty good scrap yarn project, and I completely stand by that. I knitted mine in a size small, which is, I believe, one size up from what I should knit for my measurements, but I think my gauge may have been ever so slightly off, so I felt like it was the most sensible choice. And I used less than three of these for the main colour, I think I used about 550 metres for the main colour in total. And then I used less than one uh, skein of each of the contrast colours for the stripes. So that is less than one skein of mohair, that is about 200 metres, I think. So if you have a bunch of sort of 200 metre balls of mohair or fingering weight or lace weight yarn sitting about, then they could totally be used to do stripes on a jumper like this, and you only need about 550 metres of the main colour to be able to put this whole thing together. I think I bought six of these, so I have three left, um, or a little bit more than three left, which is really great, because that's definitely enough to make another garment. Um, I was thinking I could do potentially a vest or something, so that I know that I have enough, even though I'm not using stripes for a lot of it. 
Quite a few people have asked me how I found this yarn and whether I would say that it's scratchy. I think if you are sensitive to wool, if wool being scratchy is something that you especially worry about, this probably isn't the wool for you. It definitely is itchier than, say, the Knitting Fold of Heavy Merino, which I think knits up to a similar gauge, um, or the Phil Carolina Peruvian Highland wool. But I don't have any issues wearing this against my neck, and I do get irritated by yarn sometimes, so it's not like I'm somebody who doesn't care about scratchy yarn at all. I find it okay to wear against my neck. So if you're super worried about yarn being scratchy, this probably isn't the best, but I think that most people would probably be okay with it. I decided not to knit the turtleneck that's written into pattern, and I think maybe I would struggle more with the texture of the yarn if I had included that. I mean, I suppose I will, on that note, mention <laughs> a little bit of the modifications that I made. Uh, the collar of this jumper is supposed to be a turtleneck. I didn't do it. Uh, for anybody who's interested in how I did do this collar, basically I picked up, I think, 82 or 84 stitches. It is fewer than the pattern recommends because the collar is quite sort of chunky and full, and I felt like that was a lot of stitches. So yes, I picked up 84, say, stitches on a 4mm needle. I knitted 8 rounds of rib. I then did 3 rounds of double knitting to do the fold. Instead of purling around, um, a technique that's popped up in quite a few patterns lately, I believe there's at least one pattern by my presence knitwear that's used it, definitely petite knit patterns have used it. Sort of 3 rounds of double knitting, where on the first round you only work the knit stitches, the second round you only knit the purl stitches, and the third round you work the knit stitches again. And then I did seven more rounds of rib after that and carefully seamed it down to where I picked the stitches up. Because I seamed it down rather than knitting the live stitches together with the body of the jumper and then binding off as I did that, um, it gave a lot more stretch. I know that the binding off method is worse than the method where you sort of seam it down, but it is also a lot more effort to do this seaming, so I'm glad I did it here, but I suppose that's why in the past sometimes I haven't. I thought it would also be interesting to maybe do the proper tubular bind off for this, I think I've mentioned before uh, in some of my videos, I never do a tubular bind off the proper kind where you do the two setup rounds with the double knitting. I always just go straight in with a needle, do an, I think it's called an Italian bind off, just a regular sewing bind off, and I like the look. Once in a while, I like to go back to techniques that I've written off as being not worth it, I suppose, to see if I've changed my mind on that. I haven't. I don't think that this bind off looks notably nicer than the Italian bind off that I normally do, and it is a little bit more trouble. I mean, it looks fine, but I wouldn't say that it's that great, you know? This jumper fits me pretty well. Uh, I do really like the construction. I think it gives a pretty elegant look overall. Lightly oversized, but not too oversized. And I've been wearing it quite a bit. I often find blue is kind of hard to style um, because I wear jeans a lot, and obviously it's a bit of a difficult color to wear with jeans. But because the blue stripes here are made of three different strands of blue yarn in varying shades held together, I think it actually pairs quite nicely with all kinds of blue jeans. So it's a lot easier to style than other pieces that I have with blue in them. Talking of that, um, socks. Now, I had a pair of socks on the go in the last video, but I wasn't super loving how they were turning out, so I ended up abandoning them. I cast on a new pair, and I finished that pair as well. The pattern that I used to knit up these socks was one by a designer called Yuka. I think it's one of her newest patterns, and I knit a lot of her sock patterns, I have to say. These are a pair of toe-up socks. They have a lace pattern up the front and back of the leg and the front of the foot. And they have a really interesting scalloped cable detail with slip stitches. I'll get a little closer to show you. I have been wearing these socks, so apologies if they're not looking that great, but you can kind of see here this really interesting scalloped edge, which I think is sort of the main feature of this design. And then the lace along the front and back of the sock is this sort of lightly floral looking lace. It's very pretty. Now these socks are not like my usual socks in several ways. Firstly, I did knit them on 2.5mm needles. I'm trying to think why I did that, other than the fact I got new 2.5mm needles and I was quite excited to use them. Normally I knit all of my socks on 2.25mm needles in order to make them wear a little bit better. I think it might have been to do with the stitch count that some of the stitch counts didn't really align with the stitch counts I thought would work best for me if I was knitting on 2.25mm needles. This is 64 stitches, I think, and it's slightly on the larger side, but it's okay. Well, it's slightly on the larger side in the leg and the lower part of my foot. The thing is, and on a similar note to how I was saying for the jumper, I don't like doing a tubular bind-off, but I thought I'd give it a go check that I still don't like doing it. 
Um, for this sock, you might have noticed the heel construction is not something I usually go for. I have a short row heel on this pair of socks, which is what the pattern specified. I knitted the short row heel exactly to pattern, but I normally always do a heel flap and gusset because I find that the fit is better for me. Plus, I think they wear a bit better too. The method that's used for this particular short row heel um, it's definitely a little bit more complicated than other short row heels I've done. I have done in the past German short row heels and I have done, what's it called? Fish lips kiss heel as well. This one definitely required a little bit more concentration, I think, than those. But I do think that the resulting heel is probably the nicest I've seen. Hopefully you can see how clean that looks. On this side I actually made a tiny mistake. I think I was knitting in front of TV or something and not really paying attention. Um, so yeah, look at this side, it's nice and there aren't any mistakes. So the two reasons I said I don't do short row heels, firstly that I don't think the fit is as good and secondly that it doesn't wear as well. Obviously I can't talk yet about how this sock is going to wear since I've only worn it a handful of times, but the fit is definitely not quite as great. It really does end up stretching a lot, sort of, I don't know what you call it, the bit where your leg and your foot go like this uh, that section there. <laughs> Over the ankle? I don't know. The lace stretches out a lot and it really doesn't look so great because there just isn't as much fabric there to cover the heel as there would be if I'd done a heel sock and gusset. The yarn that I use for this particular sock is sock yarn from Izzia. It's just called Izzia Sock. Um, I got it on sale. I believe that was because they're transitioning from selling it in 100 gram balls to selling it in 50 gram balls. And so a lot of the 100 gram balls were on sale recently and so I got this lovely blue colour. I think the colour is called colour number 11. I chose this yarn in particular for this sock because, well, firstly I was very excited about using it. It's a really interesting sock yarn that is supposed to be more environmental in how the superwash treatment is carried out. It has quite a lot of alpaca in it. I would say texturally it reminds me rather a lot of Drops, Drops Nord, the sock yarn which also has a lot of alpaca in it. They're quite similar. And it also has only recycled nylon in it, so no new plastic is manufactured when this sock yarn is made. It feels really luxurious, like it feels like an expensive sock yarn. I feel like luxurious sock yarn as opposed to a yarn that feels like it's hard wearing. Sometimes it's sort of luxurious in that it feels silky and very soft, and other times it's luxurious in that it feels really plush. And this is that sort of thick, plush, fluffy sock yarn. So I thought that since I was knitting the sock on 2.5mm needles, this would stand up better than some others because it is a little bit thicker and a little bit fuller. So far I've really enjoyed wearing it. Um, it's definitely a sock yarn that I would reach for again if I wasn't on a mission to try as many different sock yarns as possible. Overall, I really enjoyed the pattern. I really enjoyed the yarn. The only thing that I would probably change is the heel construction. It was nice to try out for once, but it's not something I'm going to continue doing. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to show you my first work in progress piece at the moment. Now this is one of those pieces where I'm just not going to be able to show it to you in a way where you can really see what's going on. I've had this yarn sitting around for quite a while. I bought it mm, a little before Christmas maybe, um, and I think my plan for it was I wanted to do a long sleeve off the shoulder blouse. I posted some of my sketches and some of you guys expressed enthusiasm about them, but I just haven't been feeling it so much lately. I don't know, maybe it's slightly less on trend now than it was, and that's maybe a sign that I shouldn't be missing it. Like, I don't want to design pieces that are so trendy that I lose enthusiasm for them after a little bit. So what I wanted to do instead was a style that I've been wearing for years and I still reach for a lot. I wanted to do like a short sleeved blouse with little puff sleeves and a ruffle just not quite a peplum, but like a little ruffle below the waist. I wanted to have a square neck and I-cord details, so I think folded hems, but maybe I-cord that I can tie in the back to make the waist fit really well. Since I am sort of freehanding this, I can't show you any pictures of what it will look like since I am just making it up as I go along, um, but so far I am pretty happy with how it's looking. So, back to the yarn. This yarn is from Cardiff Cashmere. Um, I think it's called Brush Light, and it is 82% cashmere and 18% silk. This is an expensive yarn, like very expensive. It is kind of like sort of Surya alpaca or like silk mohair type yarns and that it has a silk core and then it has these fluffy cashmere fibers throughout it. So what I was thinking was I wanted this blouse to be ever so slightly sheer just to give it a sort of airy look um, but not being so sheer that it's tricky to find things to wear it with. But I was thinking that you could probably meet gauge for this using either one strand of silk mohair if you wanted it to be sheerer, or two strands if you wanted to make it a little bit more opaque, 
and you could probably do it with something like Drops Brushed Up Hackersell if you really wanted to step on a budget. So I think you'd get a similar look at a very affordable price. Or alternatively, you know, splash the cash and get this because it is a really special feeling yarn. I would say it's not so much of a must-have as the regular Cardiff Cashmere yarn, Cardiff Cashmere Classic or Cardiff Cashmere Small, but it still is really lovely. Uh, the colour, I'm not sure how to pronounce, so <laughs> even though I do remember what it is, so I will put it in the description. So yes, I'm knitting this up on 3.5mm needles and it is proving to be a little bit of a drag. Because it has puff sleeves, I'm currently on the yoke and I haven't yet divided the body and sleeves, so I have a lot of stitches on the needle just to really give that sleeve this shape that I want. Perhaps if I hold it like this you can see where I did loads of increases all in one round. So you get that sort of little puff at the top of the sleeve and then I'm going to uh, do something similar at the bottom of the sleeve to bring it back in. So it'll have sort of zero ease at the bottom of the sleeve or something like that. And then I want to do a whole folded hem at the bottom. So yeah, even though this yarn is really luxurious, it's definitely a project that I'm having to make myself go back to all the time because I am at that tedious point where you're knitting a yoke, especially one with puff sleeves on pretty small needles. I think once I divide the body and sleeves and I start doing a lot of waist decreases and I have many, many fewer stitches on the needle, it will become a little bit more fun. And also I suppose then I'll be able to see more how the piece is coming together and then I tend to get more excited about it and find it easier to work on this as well. We'll have to see how this yarn wears. I'm worried that it might sort of shed or pill quite a bit and it might be kind of hard to maintain because you can't really shave it without losing the fluff that you want there. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. My other two work in progress pieces are both socks. I know that might seem slightly surprising since I tend to just have one pair of socks on the go at a time, um, but well, there's a reason for it. I'll start off with this one. This was the first sock that I cast on and I cast this sock on as soon as I cast off these socks. This is another pattern by Yuka. Uh, can I say Yuka sock patterns are really nice. This one I think is called Erica. That's uh, quite funny because the socks that I'm wearing are also called Erica. These ones were from the first 52 weeks of socks book. I forget the designer's name, uh, whereas this is a different Erica pattern. Hopefully you can see these are really detailed cabled socks with this big central cable with moss stitch within it. And then smaller cables and these twisted uh, squiggle cables as well. Now, all of the stitch counts for the different sizes that this sock comes in are large. I'm knitting, I think, the middle size, and I want to say it has 70 stitches in the foot, something like that. It's really a surprisingly large number. So what I decided to do was firstly, I am using my 2.25mm needles again. These are the Chowku 2.25mm needles. Um, these are really my go-to needles for socks. These ones with the red cable, I find they work really well for Magic Loop and I knit all of my socks using Magic Loop. And then I also wanted to use a thinner sock yarn to keep the size down as well. I've been putting off using this sock yarn even though it's looked kind of interesting because it is definitely on the thinner side. This is Socks Yeah. It has an exclamation mark so I feel like I should say it with more enthusiasm. Socks Yeah from Cute Knits. I believe it comes in a DK weight version but this is just the regular fingering weight version and this colour, I think it's called Dan Bright, it's just grey. It comes in actually a really interesting selection of colours. They have a lot of the sort of very muted blues and greens that I like. They also, I think, have a range of neon colours, if that's more your thing. And yet, for some reason, I bought grey. I don't know what came over me. There's a lot of grey yarn in this video. Um, we barely brushed the surface here. I am actually really, really enjoying this yarn. It, as I said, it's quite thin but it's also very round and smooth, so the cables look really beautiful in it. It's not so thin that it looks messy when it's knitted up on 2.25mm needles. I think you might struggle more if you want to use 2.5mm needles. And it's definitely less soft than other merino-based sock yarns that I've used, so I really do think this might wear a bit better. Obviously I'm going to have to wait and see, but it really has this nice, smooth, non-scratchy, but not too soft texture to it that I quite like. It feels like it's spun to be strong, if that makes any sense. It is a little bit more expensive than some other sock yarn. It kind of looks cheap when you buy it because it comes in 50 gram skeins, or hanks I think, but you have to buy two of them. I suppose if you have smaller feet than me, you may be able to get away with just buying one again, but I have like EU size 40 feet, so 
I generally always use somewhere between 60 and 70 grams of yarn in order to knit a pair of socks, even if those socks aren't very long. So I did pick up two. Again, this is a yarn that I could see myself loving and repeatedly buying if I went on a mission to try as many different sock yarns as possible. The colour selection is really pretty and it's very easily available in the UK as well. So yes, nice yarn, the sock is looking really cute. The thing is, between the complex cables and the tiny needles, I know that this sock is going to take me a very long time to knit. And so when I got the new sock book, one moment. When I got this, I couldn't wait to cast on another sock because I knew it was going to be a long time before I could cast on another one. Having finished that cabled pair, I just went for it right away. I had talked in the last episode about how I ordered this book and it hadn't yet arrived. I purchased this from Valentina of my ivory room um, and it just arrived this week. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you may know that the first 52 weeks of sock book is kind of what begun my love of sock knitting. Like I'd knitted socks here and there before I got that book, but I wasn't somebody who always had a pair of socks on the go or anything. And now I have a big box full of hand knit socks. I wear my hand knit socks quite literally every day and I always have at least one pair on the go. When I first saw this book advertised, I wasn't sure that I was going to get it. While I loved the first book, I haven't knitted a lot of pairs of socks from it, probably only three or four pairs of 52. So it's not like I needed another book. And I think that was because a lot of the socks in that book are either too complicated um, or just use techniques that I don't like. And so even though there are a lot of patterns in there, not very many of them are patterns that I would actually want to knit up. When I first saw this book being promoted, I think when they want to promote this book, they want to make it seem really unique. So I think they use a lot of the more unusual socks for the promotional images. There's a pair of socks with fringe on them. There's a pair of socks with a giant mohair ruffle. Um, there's a pair of socks which is beaded. All of these are obviously really interesting socks and I appreciate having techniques in this book that people might not have used for knitting socks in the past, but realistically, they're not socks that I'm going to knit up and then wear all the time. I'm not sure I have the patience to bead my socks and they also might be uncomfortable with shoes over the top or Doc Martens, I suppose. <laughs> they're not for me, being my point. What I realized when I saw the patterns from this book lesson on Ravelry is that they also have a lot of patterns for slightly more boring socks that I might actually really enjoy making and wear a lot, you know, in between all of the interesting socks. And so suddenly I was like, yeah, I could actually see myself knitting quite a lot of the socks from here anyway. There are two patterns in this book by Yuka, and as I said, I've probably spent more than I spent on this book on Yuka patterns in the past, so it's nice to have a couple more. Plus loads of other different designers so I can try techniques that other people enjoy. I think a book like this is a really great way to experiment with sock knitting, try out different construction methods, try out different heels, sock yarn, gauge, and really see what suits you because I assume all of the different people who've contributed patterns to this book have contributed patterns that showcase their favourite features of sock knitting. Anyway, uh, when this book arrived, which was yesterday uh, afternoon, I jumped straight in and I cast on a sock right away. And I am already, what, like three quarters done with it, probably. I think I put the ribbon in the right place to actually uh, find the page that I was using. This is the pattern and the name of the designer. And hopefully you can see what the sock looks like. I decided to cast on this sock because obviously I have a tiny needle complicated kind of sock going and I thought it might be quite nice to, if I am going to have two pairs of socks on the go, have the other one be completely different. So I'm knitting this sock up on a 3mm needle. I actually think the pattern might ask for a 3.5mm needle. It's, I think it asks for DK plus mohair. It's a little bit ambiguous. It says, well, it gives a yarn that I assume is a DK and says to hold it with mohair. And then the alternative, like if you're not using the specified yarn, it says to use a certain number of meters of heavy DK weight yarn, a strand of each yarn held together, but it never lists what the second yarn is. So I'm not sure if it is asking for DK and mohair, or heavy DK and mohair, or just heavy DK. The point is it's a heavy DK sock, basically. I never knitted DK weight socks because I always thought they were sort of a sock you knit when you're lazy. I mean, not to be judgmental or anything, like I get wanting to get through a sock quickly, but I was like, you're sacrificing the practicalness of the sock in order to have it finished more quickly. Then I missed a pair of DK weight socks and I actually don't find them inconvenient to wear at all. 
Obviously they're super nice in the winter, super nice with Doc Martens. I actually reach for them more than I also my other socks, plus they took a weekend to knit. So I really would like to make more DK weight socks. The stitch counts though for this sock were kind of surprising. Like I'm knitting the smallest size, plus I'm knitting it with smaller needles, plus I think I'm using thinner yarn. Um, and this still matches up to the number of stitches that I used for the DK weight sock that I knitted in the past. So I'm surprised I've been knitting the smallest size because I do have quite big feet. The yarn that I'm using for this, um, this one is Rico Superba Alpaca Luxury Socks. I've knitted a whole jumper in this yarn before. My Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit used this yarn. It does shed horribly, so I really didn't think it would wear especially well for socks, even though it does have nylon in it. So I thought that maybe holding it with mohair might help it last a little bit better. This mohair, I'm not 100% sure what it was because it wasn't labelled in my stash, but the shape of the ball makes me think it's probably drops. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to have enough of this to get through a pair of socks, so what I might do is just find some other random cream stash mohair and use that to finish it off. These needles are 3mm needles, and other than that, I've basically knitted it exactly to pattern. It is knitted cuff down and has a heel flap and gusset construction. It's a slip stitch heel flap, which I really like, and the sock has a really nice broken rib texture with eyelets in between the sections of broken rib. It's just been such a fun and addictive knit. It's one of those nice patterns where you do a few rows of something and then you break it up with something else and then go back to repeating that. And so you're always, you know, only like five rows off starting the next section. And so you really feel like you're progressing quickly through it. This is totally a sock that you could make within a day, I think. You could get out a pair of socks on a weekend if you had a lot of free time and you wanted to make these. They felt sort of impractically thick, more like slippers almost when I first started knitting them. But I've tried them on now that I'm a little bit closer to finishing them, and I actually think they'll be a really nice cozy winter sock. Yeah, basically I'm really enjoying this pattern, I strongly recommend it. Try DK socks if you haven't already, they're a lot of fun and actually quite useful too. So, those are all the projects I have on the go at the moment, and I've spoken about a book that I bought too. Um, but now I'll move on to show some of the other stuff that I picked up, because I have acquired quite a bit of yarn lately. The theme of the yarn that I have in this episode is... Uh, me trying to get a job, and also it's all grey. Firstly, I spoke in, I think, the last episode, and definitely in previous episodes as well, about how much I want to knit a jumper using Cardiff Cashmere Classic. It is a really luxurious, lovely cashmere yarn. It's about £15 per 25 gram skein, so it's expensive, really expensive. You probably need at least 10 to knit a jumper with full length sleeves. So this is going to be a £150 jumper, and so I had not bought the yarn for it, even though I've been wanting it for quite literally years. And then, uh, a couple of days after I filmed that, I saw a post on Instagram from Knitted Home. They're a UK yarn retailer, and they were saying that they've just started stocking these box sets of Cardiff Cashmere Classic. I think they had box sets of other Cardiff Cashmere yarn as well, like the brush light that I'm using to make that blouse, and maybe Cardiff Cashmere Small as well. So this box set was, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people don't like to talk about the cost of yarn in videos because sometimes it feels kind of uncomfortable to say, I spent this amount of money on yarn, um, but I'm going to be completely transparent with you. This was, I think, £130 for this box, so this was expensive. I think there was also a 10% off code available, um, which I didn't find until after I bought this, so I spent the full amount. But if you are going to buy one, I would recommend checking a few, uh, I think, sort of affiliate codes are available on Instagram that can get you an extra 10% off, and that will be well worth it. So I went for a very sensible colour. Yes, this is maybe the most special yarn I've ever bought. This is definitely the most special yarn I've ever bought. The colour is called Piombo and it's just the regular light grey colour. I know I spoke a little bit in the last video about how if I wanted to knit a jumper with this yarn, um, I might use the shade Circus, which is a really dark muted green. They didn't have Circus for this box set, they had quite a lot of colours but not all of them, and so it wasn't an option. But the other thing is, I wasn't really sure how to justify buying this box of yarn. Like, I don't need this, I have enough yarn to be knitting with for the time being, and obviously it is extremely expensive. So the way I justified this is, I'm not going to knit this out, this is going away somewhere. This is going to be my gift to myself if I get a job, like a proper job. So 
For those of you who don't know, I try not to speak too much about my personal life on this channel because I appreciate it's probably not interesting to most people, but I'm a final year computer science student. I'm graduating in two or three months. And so I really want to have a job lined up when I graduate, but getting a graduate job in the UK is really hard. I guess I did probably one of the most employable subjects at debatably the best university in the country for that subject, and yet it's still so, so hard to find anything. I'm yet to hear of any graduate scheme with even a 1% success rate um, for applicants. It's really rough. So it's very demoralizing, constantly getting rejected from tens of applications for these jobs. And so I'd like to have this sitting there so that I'm motivated to keep going. And um, when I do finally get something, I'll be able to take this box and knit myself a jumper to wear to work. Like a proper, boring, nice office jumper that will get me excited about it. I don't know, maybe that's very convoluted, but that's how I justified it to myself. And so this will be a reward for me when I finally get it together and find myself a job. <laughs> that isn't the only grey yarn I've bought because of my job applications since the last episode. I had a job interview. I went to a final stage interview for a company in Oxford. Travelling to Oxford from Cambridge is a pain. Like, it's four or five hours, I guess, from my home near Cambridge to get to Oxford. Um, I spent hundreds of pounds, quite literally, getting to this interview, and so I thought I should probably make a day of it. And by make a day of it, I mean I went to Oxford Yarn Shop afterwards. You know, when you're feeling stressed about an interview and you're fairly sure you're not getting the job, but you spent a bunch of money going there, uh, I felt like cheering myself up by looking at some yarn and I ended up buying a little bit. Oxford Yarn Shop is excellent. It's the one thing I have to admit Oxford does do better than Cambridge. The yarn shop is beautiful. It seems to mostly stock Izzia and it has a great selection of their stuff, like most colours of most of their yarn, I would say. Including loads that I hadn't actually seen in person before, it was beautiful. It's such a nice shop. If you're in or near Oxford, um, or even just looking for somewhere to shop online, I really do recommend it. It's tiny, and yet it has this amazing floor-to-ceiling yarn on all the walls. So lovely. So, I bought Izzia Aran Tweed. This is a really pretty yarn. It's that sort of neutral, but like with a little bit of spice from the tweed that I enjoy so much. The same reason I really like Noro yarn, you know, like it can be beige or grey and yet still have a bit of something going on. And this Aran tweed is really beautiful. These are 100 grams, 160 meters and 100% wool. So I bought five of these or 800 meters. I was kind of worried that I wouldn't be enough to knit a jumper, but since I finished that sycamore sweater now and I used, what, like 700 meters of yarn, I do think I can probably get a slightly oversized jumper out of 800 meters of this, especially because I should be able to knit it up on a larger needle because I got this to hold with it. This is Ezia Alpaca 1. It's basically just lace weight alpaca that you can hold with something else. This is in the colour E2S. Me and the Izzia shade E2S. I have used E2S in like every Izzia yarn I've ever tried because that's what they call their light grey. This is colour grey. Lovely. Here they are together. You can see this has really pretty sort of beige and black flecks in it. It's very lovely. Because this is a lighter colour and has a little bit of texture to it, I thought it would work really nicely if I wanted to knit a very simple jumper with a couple of details. I have a store-bought jumper I got years and years ago. It is wool, actually. Um, it's just light grey and has these sort of exposed seams on it. I think I've worn it quite a few times on one of my old channels. And so I thought that I could kind of create not an exact copy, um, but a similar look using this. So I wanted to do a boxy jumper with exposed seams, um, just to add a little bit of interest to it. Anyway, that will probably be a late summer project in preparation for the autumn. And I made it to one more yarn shop. Basically, I don't have uh, really a local yarn shop, so when I do get to go somewhere, I like to pick something up. There is a yarn shop, I think I've mentioned before, in the town that my grandparents live in. It's probably about 40 minutes by car, perhaps, from where I live. And uh, this shop is called Yarnworks, and they sort of had this pretty big store in an industrial estate. And literally today, they opened a new shop on Hadley High Street. So I dropped in and I just bought a couple of little pieces. Firstly, since I just got 52 weeks of socks yesterday, um, and I've been wanting to get some nice sock yarn to try out some of the patterns in here. I did buy one hank of sock yarn. This is Emma's Yarn Practically Perfect Sock. 
I've used a DK weight yarn from Emma's Yarn before to make a pair of DK weight socks, but I've never used the regular sock yarn. This shade is called It's Casual, and it's hand dyed sort of blue with dark blue and yellowy flecks, kind of like blue jeans. It's really pretty. I'm not a big hand dyed yarn person, I have bought very little hand dyed yarn in my life, but Yarn Work has a really excellent selection, um, and so I thought it'd be nice to try a little bit. Also, when I go into a knitting shop, sort of unplanned, and I want to pick something up without having really thought through what project I'm going to use it for, sock yarn is the way to go because I just get through it. Like, I knit a pair of socks probably every anywhere from a couple of days to three weeks, perhaps. So this sock yarn will get used up, and it's also a chance for me to buy something a little bit more exciting since I'm not as limited to the very muted colours that I generally like to wear for clothing. The other cool thing about socks is you don't need very much yarn like 50 to 100 grams, and so you can buy some more expensive and more special yarn, um, and it's not too much of a, an expense. Then the other bits that I bought at Yarnworks, I got three skeins of knitting for Olive Merino. Again, it's summertime, I will make a camisole or a t-shirt out of this, it's guaranteed. Three skeins is enough for me for a short sleeve, slightly oversized t-shirt, um, and more than enough for a camisole. This colour is called Nordic Beach, it's one of my favourite colours from Knitting for Olive, I think it's really beautiful. It's just one of those things that I can have in stash and I know I will use, so I don't really have to plan it because this Knitting for Olive Merino I can basically knit any summer top with at any time. And the last thing that I picked up from Yarnworks, I got some stitch markers. When I was working on the sycamore sweater, this jumper actually requires so many stitch markers. Basically, um, as you're working the uneven stripes, you end up doing a lot of Japanese short row turns, and every time you do one of those turns, you need to add another stitch marker. I did not have enough. I was trying to use like bobby pins, just anything I could find, um, and I wouldn't recommend that, so I did end up getting these little colourful split ring markers from Coco Knits. I know that these are really popular, I don't have any split ring markers, and I think they'd be really useful. Most of the stitch markers I have are those sort of like fully closed rings. And so this is actually a mildly practical purchase that I really can justify. So I think that is about it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really looking forward to showing you uh, the things that I'm working on with this yarn that I picked up in subsequent episodes. It would be the most exciting if I got to use this yarn, wouldn't it? Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>